Hey there, this is Leech. Today I will talk about watercolour brushes. I'm asked very often what kind of brushes are best for watercolour painting. It can be really mind-boggling to get out to the shops and try to look for a brush because you know there's so much available. So let's just start with what not to use and then move on to the types of brushes available. Right, so here we have a generic watercolour pen set. It's $4 from Popular Bookshop and it comes with a free brush like this. And I think most people start off with the free brush and fail quite miserably at painting. And really it's not your fault, it's, it's the brush because it's, it's not well made. It's really flimsy and plasticky. Uh, you know, look at this, it's bushy, it's, it's like it's been chopped off. There's no point to this brush. And so it's going to be really difficult to paint what you like because you can't control the brush. Plus, I'm sure everybody's had this experience. This sort of brush sheds quite a bit. You'll be spending a lot of time picking up hair from your art. So I would suggest not to use this and really go out and buy something. So what type of brushes are there? If there's only one kind of brush that I could bring out on a trip, it would be the round brush. And these are round brushes right here. They are very versatile and great for detailed work. There's also flat brushes. I find that they're useful for straight lines, geometric shapes, cityscapes. Um, I use them for mountain tops and silhouettes, you know, just to get a nice edge. But for me, they're not so versatile. They might be useful for what you paint. We also have wash brushes. Wash brushes are made to hold more water so that you can put a, a larger amount of water or paint on your paper without having to reload. And wash brushes come in flats as well as rounds and a variety of other shapes such as this. These are special brushes. This fan shape, you can use textural effects or grass. Um, or cross hatch effects and then this one is a stippler which we can use to make leaves of a tree just do that like that so these are extras that you can buy if you want uh, which brings me to size and the size of the brush that you should buy really depends on what you paint for me I paint a lot of small things so my brush sizes, the rounds are always about size 2 to a 6, which is about this size. And if I paint bigger things, then I'll, I'll change the brush. I'm not going to use this to do a huge landscape. It's not going to help me. So rule of thumb is just use what helps you and not hinders your work. Watercolour brushes can be synthetic or it can be natural. And the difference is in the fibre. With synthetics, it's made of, um, it just looks like a plastic kind of material. And technology has really improved. So a lot of these brushes are pretty good, pretty good. And the good thing about synthetics is that they are very easy to maintain. You don't have to take care of it very much. It just sort of rinse your brush and you're done. Um, and they're durable. They can take a lot of abuse from beginners. Uh, and you know they're cheap they're really affordable so something like this is six dollars and then you know if you ruin it you can buy another one the only problem with synthetics is that they tend to be a little stiff so you can see here they've got look at that and they don't hold as much water so you might have to reload often and that could affect your paint and water ratio if you're not careful Watercolour brushes made from natural materials tend to be a little more expensive and they also tend to be a little more fragile and more difficult to maintain. So if you're buying something like a squirrel or a sable brush, you're going to need to um, wash it. And I use this, which is a artist brush soap. And I sometimes, you know, just put a little conditioner on it so it doesn't dry out. And this isn't for everybody because 
can you imagine having to look after your brushes this way? It's like your own hair. Plus, they don't last forever. They, they do, you know, damage easily. And you might have to replace them often. And the huge deterrent for buying a natural fiber for your brush is that it's expensive. So just, just as a comparison, this is a size 12 Kalinsky Sable. And um, okay, as a side note, Kalinsky Sable is the best sable and for the best watercolor brushes because it's it's fairly durable for what it is. It keeps a nice, um, resilient and durable point and it's able to hold lots of water. Um, it's, it's fairly rare and hard to harvest because it only comes from the male winter coat of the sable animal from this Kalinsky region in Russia. So you can quite possibly imagine that prices aren't going to be cheap. And for a size 12 like this, it's about $175. And for the equivalent size in the synthetic, $7.90. Squirrels aren't that much less expensive. Something like this, which is a size 6 wash brush in Gorgeous Squirrel, you can see that. Can you feel how soft that is? I mean, not feel, but look. Compared to, to uh, the synthetic, which just is like boing, like that. And so the difference is in, you know, when you paint, the natural fiber gives you a much softer edge and um, it's great for natural things like flowers and you know sky it just reacts very differently to the touch and on your paper so anyway this this squirrel costs i guess close to 60 dollars it's not cheap and so as a beginner i really would suggest going for something more affordable and more durable that you don't really have to take care of um and when you improve you might want to invest in a better brush so yeah uh i hope that was useful if you have any questions you can just message me i'm on instagram and facebook and um i'll see you soon thanks bye